say for learning uh, for News ELA, I did a search for SNCC, which stands for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee or SNCC. I put that in the search bar, a bunch of texts came up, including this text it's, uh, about civil rights leader Stokely Carmichael. So I click on that. And it opens up the text, US history text. There's a photograph of uh, Stokely Carmichael. That was his name back then, and some other people. Up here, I can change the, um, the text level. So I'm thinking this afternoon, let's keep it simple. We'll do 700 Lexile level. And uh, <clears throat> let's read together, shall we? Synopsis. We know that that's like the summary. It says, Stokely Carmichael was a civil rights activist. He worked alongside Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Carmichael later gave up believing in nonviolent protests. He argued instead for black power. <clears throat> so that's the summary, that's the overview and the synopsis. If we go to early life and education, Stokely Carmichael was born on the Caribbean island of Trinidad and Tobago in 1941. He came to New York City at age 11. Carmichael watched his father, a black immigrant, work two jobs. He was a carpenter by day and taxi driver at night. Later, Carmichael criticized the American dream that had pushed his father. Quote, the next thing that came to that poor black man was death from working too hard. And he was only in his forties. So um, Stokely Carmichael's father died pretty young because he was working so hard. Carmichael went to the Bronx High School of Science in New York City. Many of his classmates were rich and white. Carmichael was popular in school. Still, he knew being black kept him apart in important ways. In high school, Carmichael was inspired to join the civil rights movement. The movement was fighting for equality for African Americans. At the time, many states were segregated. Whites and blacks were kept apart in public places. Carmichael attended Howard University in Washington, DC. The school historically has had black students. He studied philosophy and continued to protest. Carmichael joined the Freedom Rides. These were bus trips taken in the South with both black and white people aboard. At the time, this was illegal. Carmichael was arrested during the trip and jailed for 49 days. He continued to protest and graduated from Howard University with honors in 1964. Begins career with the SNCC. And so that's the title of the next section. So now we'll go, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC, SNCC, which was a civil rights group called the Summer of 1964, Freedom Summer. The group began registering voters in the South. In one year, Carmichael raised the number of registered black voters from 70 to 2,600 
in one Alabama county. I'll read that sentence again. I'll read that sentence one more time because that's an important number. In one year, Carmichael raised the number of registered black voters from 70 to 2,600 in one Alabama county. Carmichael started a new political party. He chose a Black Panther for its symbol. The picture later inspired a different Black activist group in California called the Black Panthers. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and SNCC believed in nonviolent protests. Over time, Carmichael became frustrated with peaceful protests. Change was slow. Carmichael began leading SNCC in May 1966. He changed the group's thinking. After a civil rights activist was shot and wounded in Mississippi, Carmichael gave his most famous speech. We've been saying freedom for six years, he said. What we are going to start saying now is black power. Black power, that's the next section. The phrase black power became popular. Younger civil rights activists started saying it. Carmichael said the meaning of black power was a call for black people in this country to unite, to recognize their heritage, to build a sense of community. It is a call for black people to define their own goals, to lead their own organizations. Black power scared many white Americans. Dr. King called black power an unfortunate choice of words. So the next section is all about joining the Black Panther Party. In 1967, Carmichael left the SNCC and became a leader of the Black Panthers. They focused on black power. Carmichael spent the next two years giving speeches and writing. He focused on Pan-Africanism, which was the idea that all people of African ancestry share a common bond. In 1969, Carmichael quit the Black Panthers and went to live in Guinea in West Africa. He worked for Pan-African Unity. Carmichael changed his name to Kwame Ture. We have one more section here that's about his later years and legacy. Now it's interesting because in the text it says Carmichael lived in Guinea for the rest of his life. But he changed his name to Kwame Ture. So we could just as easily say Kwame Ture lived in Guinea for the rest of his life. On November 15th, 1998, he died of prostate cancer. He was 57. Carmichael was a powerful speaker, strong writer, and good organizer. He was one of the most important figures of the American Civil Rights Movement. His spirit is captured in the way he answered his telephone until he died. ready for the revolution.